Good evening everybody and welcome to our hands-on lab. In this video, we are essentially going to build an entire uh, data integration solution. So you have your transactional data such as Postgres, MySQL, it can be literally anything. For this video, we're going to consider Postgres and MySQL. We're going to bring data from these database using Debesium, right? We're going to use the Debesium connector and bring the, the data from these tables incrementally, which means anytime any data is inserted, updated, it's going to basically broadcast all these events to a Kafka, right? A Kafka topic. Now, basically, we're going to use Kafka Connect and basically Kafka S3 connector, and we're going to basically load all these data into S3 which means anytime our data is inserted, updated, all those events will flow into Kafka via Debesium and into S3. And then in the night, we're gonna process um, these data. So we, a glue job is gonna run in the night. It's gonna take all the data from the raw zone and essentially put in the silver zone. Silver zone is essentially curated data where you do not have any duplicates and the user can run ad hoc queries via Athena. They can build dashboards. Th these are your director manager. ML engineers can directly consume data from the bronze and silver zone, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, for their machine learning purposes. So this is exactly what we're gonna build. So without wasting further any time, let's get started into a demo. All right, let's get started. So the first step is basically to spin up the entire stack: Kafka, Zookeeper, Postgres, MySQL, Debesium. Uh, so we gotta spin up all of that. So the first step is pretty straightforward. Come to the repository and by the way, a special thanks to the author Amalio Adam where I was able to take some code and I was able to develop my own version of it. So thank you to the author. So the first step is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna do this demo with you. You're gonna say docker compose up hyphen hyphen build. So this will basically spin up everything. Again, as I said, Postgres, MySQL, Kafka, Zookeeper, Debesium, um, the Kafka Connect, and then the S3 sync. Everything is gonna spin up. So we're gonna wait for the stack to complete. My stack is up and running, as you can see. And if I go to the Docker UI, I can see all my containers are now up and running. Now, since the stack is up and running, what you need to do is open up a browser and head over to localhost 3030, and you will see a beautiful UI here. At this point, what we need to do is, uh, we need to basically capture all the events on a table called sales, okay? So for that, what we need to do is, we need to create a division connector. Connector is a way which will connect to the Postgres, it's gonna listen for the events, and anytime an insert update happens, it's gonna broadcast to a Kafka topic. I'll show you everything in action. So the first step that we need to do here is, after the stack is up and running, go to the uh, localhost 3030, click on connector section, and then here, click on new. Here you can see all the source, these are the sinks. Source means uh, where you can connect. Sinks mean basically where you want to dump the data or where you want to transfer the data, right? So I'm going to click on Postgres for now. And here I'll, uh, in the project directory, you will have a file called um, Postgres in the schema folder. And here just copy paste everything that I have. So what this does is basically this tells uh, Debesium that to listen on a database called Postgres, where the username is Postgres, the password is Postgres, listen to a table called sales in the, in the schema called public. So essentially this is all the configuration. So I'm gonna click on create and my connector is now created. So great, you made a connector, right? So now anytime you insert update, the, those events will be broadcasted, broadcasted to a Kafka topic. So let's take a look at that. So the next step is in the project, uh, you'll have a folder called Python files and there is a Python uh, file called Python producer postgres.py. What I want you to do is basically run the file. So here I'm gonna run the file. Uh, this, what this does is basically it inserts some fake data into the sales table and I'm gonna stop it. And here you can see there are two events or two things that is inserted into Postgres. And now what we wanna do is basically head over to again localhost 3030. And then here you can head over to the topic section and what you would see there's a topic called Postgres public sale. This is the one that Debesium made for us. I'm going to click on that. And now uh, as I've inserted the data into Postgres, I should see these events here. So here you can see these are the two events that came in. I can see the raw data again. Beautiful, right? Uh, I can also see the same data uh, in the um, uh, PG admin. I'm connected to here to Postgres. I'm just gonna run a select star here and here you can see both the data. So that means at this point, anytime I insert, anytime I update, those events are now flowing into Kafka. So that's great, right? Uh, so far so good, right? So now since these events are in the Kafka topic, we need a consumer to consume these messages. So we are gonna use a Kafka connect and S3 sync. So we're gonna basically get the data from the topic and essentially dump it into the S3. 
So for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm, I have a file again in the folder called schema. It is called as S3 string. I'm gonna copy. So we need to create one more connector. So now what you need to do is basically head over to localhost 3030, head over to the um, connector section, click on new. And now you'll go to the sync session, click on Amazon S3 and dump everything here. Now, the only thing that you need to change is your glue bucket. I have a bucket called glue lawn beginner, right? Uh, you can put your bucket name that you have, right? Um, again, um, that is important. And then what you want to do is click on create. So if you observe one thing carefully in the configuration, and this is essentially listening to a topic called Postgres public sales, which means anytime now I insert my data into Postgres, DBCM connector, uh, you know, will, again, DBCM will listen to those events and then uh, will be essentially broadca broadcasted to this topic called Postgres public sales. We again saw the data coming in here, right? And again, uh, now what, what's gonna happen is the S3 sync, right? So if you go back to localhost 3030, uh, if you go to the connector section, click here, and now you have an S3 sync. And if you observe, this is listening to the same topic over here. So which means now anytime you insert, update, do anything in the database, it will be captured by DBCM into Kafka topic and then into S3. So let's see uh, everything in action. So now what I'll do is basically I'll be publishing a lot of data. So I'm going to go to the exercise file. And again, in the Python modules or the Python files, you'll see a file called Python producer Postgres. At this point, again, I'm inserting a lot of data into Postgres uh, and I can uh, definitely see that through a PG admin. So I'm going to come here and I can do a select star and here you can see all the data is coming in, right? So at this point, we are inserting data into Postgres, right? Now what's going to happen is DBCM will uh, basically capture the or basically listen to those events. And if you head over to localhost 3030 and if you go to the topic section and here you can see Postgres public sales, that's the table. And here you can see you can basically see all the data that is coming into the Kafka topic, right? Amazing, right? Now at this point, what's going to happen is the S3 sync. So if you go back, uh, if you go to the sync section, here you can see the S3 sync and here if you observe that is listening to the topic Postgres public sale which means now if I go to S3 all the data should be there in my data lake. So I'm going to go to the S3 refresh and here you can see there's a folder called topic and this is the topic name Postgres public sales and partitions and here you can see all my data. I can download data to just show you quickly. So I'm going to do show in Explorer, Notepad and here you can see th this is all the data that I have. Now, there will be a two section here. Basically, when you see the data point, there'll be two sections, a before and an after. Anytime you insert something, the data will be coming in the after section. And anytime you basically uh, update something, there will be uh, the older version and the newer version, right? So if I quickly go to JSON formatter, just to really, really show you, if I put the JSON here, and here you can see I have the data in the after section, which means this was an insert event. And anytime you do an update, you will see an old and the new one. And again, this is all the metadata about that. C stands for insert, U stands for update, and D stands for delete. So that's great, right? So now every time I'm inserting data into Postgres, uh, DBCM is listening to the events. It is going into the Kafka topic and into S3. Now the, what we need to do is basically we need to perform our ETL. That is a bad job. We're just going to take the raw data and again, going to perform certain transformation and essentially create a transactional data lake. So let's take a look at that step now. So before we perform the, the ETL part, basically now we have the data in the raw zone. So if you observe, that's our source. We're capturing via DBCM and then into Kafka topic and then into S3. That's called the bronze zone. Now we need to perform certain transformation over raw data. So what I'll do is basically the first thing we need is basically a Hodi marketplace connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the connections connection section and here you can search for Hodi and click here. And then once you click here, continue to subscribe and then uh, you want to click on continue configuration and select glue 3.0 and the Apache Hodi version 0.10.1. Click on launch, click on usage information and the blue button that says um, activate connector. Give it a name. I usually prefer giving the name as Hodi connector and then click on the save option. At this point, we have a glue connector which will help us to perform uh, operations such as insert, update, delete, read, write into a Hodi table. Uh, so now you'll be also given a Jupyter notebook that uh, you can essentially use. So what we're going to do is um, the next step is um, head over to the glue section in the job section over here. Um, again, then you can head over to the Jupyter Notebook, click on Upload and click on Choose File and select your notebook. Again, the notebook is provided uh, in the GitHub section, so don't worry. So now let's walk 
um, over the code base, right? So what the code does, right? So the code is pretty, pretty straightforward, right? So I'm gonna walk you over the code now, right? Um, over here, I'm defining all the settings. I'm uh, essentially in the um, uh, US East one right now. So I'm defining the name of the connector, the uh, glue version, the region, the G, uh, defining the worker type, how many workers I need, uh, etc, etc. I'm gonna run the cell, okay? Then I'm defining all my imports, right? And here I'm essentially creating a Spark session. Uh, again, pretty straightforward. And here is basically my um, a lake path. This is where, again, um, my sink is gonna dump data, right? So if I come here, again, if you observe topics, right? And here you can see, uh, I can copy the path over the right-hand side, so click here, click on copy path. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna actually prune all the hurry folders that I have because I'm gonna do it from scratch. So I'm gonna prune these, these files. Okay, so I don't have any hoodie folder right now, okay? So back to my uh, glue notebook. Here you can see that's the path where we're gonna read the data. So um, observe carefully in the architecture. Again, uh, all the changes are captured by DBCM into Kafka topic and the sync is dumping into the S3. Now we're doing the glue part, okay? So back here. So over here, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we are just reading the data from S3. We are reading this JSON data. So again, you can see the format as JSON. Here I'm providing the raw path. So this will basically give me, uh, I, I guess I gotta run this cell. So this is gonna give me a glue data frame. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert a glue data frame into a Spark data frame. So if I uh, quickly do that over here and I do a show, right? So once the cell is complete, what I expect is I expect something like this, right? Now again, uh, this is the JSON, how it looks like. I have a before and after. I'm really not interested in the before part because anytime you will insert something, you will have the data in the after part. So if you observe, here is my data is in the after part, right? So uh, anytime you update stuff, the old copy would be in the before and the new copy will be in the after. So I'm always interest, interested in the uh, new copy. So I'm gonna uh, go inside the after section and gonna get all the data, okay? So back to my glue notebook over here. This is, uh, again, I think the cell is still running, so I'm gonna wait at this point. So once uh, this is done, I'll uh, do a show operator and show you how the data frame looks like. Uh, should be done in a second. I guess uh, the session is still loading, yeah. Yeah, it's taking a while here. Um, so just have to be patient at this point. So again, uh, now this particular cell is complete, which means the glue data frame uh, has now been converted into a spark data frame and here you can see this is how it looks like here i am interested in the after section as i said that's where the most up to date data is right so i'm i'm gonna go inside the after section over here as you can see i'm inside that and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna scroll down uh, i'm gonna do this and i'm just gonna do dot show operator so what I did is basically I said um, uh, select the column called after and dot star means you know basically create there as a data frame right I'm expanding all the keys there. So that's that I'm pretty much not interested in the price part again uh, depending upon your ETL you could again cleanse the data fill in null values you can do all that stuff right I'm gonna again I'm gonna keep it pretty straightforward okay. So. For this demo purposes, what I'll do is, uh, I, I am really, uh, I'm actually gonna drop a column and I will be dropping the column called price. Maybe I don't need it. Again, I'm gonna keep it pretty straightforward. You can do the cleansing part here. So again, I'm doing dot show. Again, this is how my data frame looks like, right? Now, again, here I'm defining all my settings. I'm saying copy on write. Uh, this is where, uh, you know, the transactional data like would be. Uh, HoodieDB, table name as sales. Um, um, then we are saying uh, the record key as invoice ID and the precom key is an item ID. Precom key is usually used for uh, dedupe purposes. Here is all my hoodie settings. Again, pretty straightforward, nothing crazy. And the last step would be basically, I'm gonna write the data. So I'm gonna run this cell. Um, and this, once this is complete, what's gonna happen is when I go to the glue, I should see a database called HoodieDB. Inside that, I will see a folder called, table called sales, and I should be able to run ad hoc queries using Athena. So I'm just gonna wait at this point. Uh, this might take a while because, you know, I have done certain data points. So I'm just waiting at this point for this to complete. Once this is complete, I'm gonna resume back. 
Oh, looks like it's complete. As you can see, it is complete now. If I go to the glue section at this point, if I refresh, here you can see HoodieDB, right? And now this is my transactional data lake. No more duplicates there in the data lake. I can come here, I can just refresh. Um, and here you can see there's a table called sales and I can run the query. And here you can see all the data in a nice, neat, neat manner, right? Uh, I'm gonna take any one of the invoice just to show you that this is actually coming from Postgres. Postgres. So 15805 and basically we'll come here and we'll say where I'm gonna say invoice. Uh, is it an integer or a string? I don't know, we'll see. Okay, here you can see 1508, item ID 86, category is household. And if you observe here, everything is nicely synced up in my uh, transactional data lake. So again, this is the entire project, right? It seems easy, but it's very complex, right? You have your source database. We are basically capturing the data with CDC, uh, with DBCM. Uh, the data is broadcasted into a Kafka topic. We have a sync, which is gonna uh, dump the data into S3. Then we essentially performed our ETL, a bad job, maybe in the night, which is scheduled, right? It's gonna take the data, dump it into to the transactional data, like perform an absurd operation. So again, I encourage you guys to try this project out. It's an amazing project, a hands-on project, all the code is given, right? And what you also wanna do a small note, basically on the raw zone, right? Again, if you don't need that raw data, I would advise you to prune the data on a regular basis, which means once you're done processing, prune the data from the raw folder. What you can also do is set up a lifecycle policy, which means as the data gets older, you can delete those data automatically into that folder. I hope you have enjoyed this amazing project. All the code is in the get up section. And also um, I wanna say a special thanks, as I said, to the author where I was, where I was able to get um, the starter code, right? And then I developed uh, the project on the top of that. So thank you so much for watching. Keep smiling, keep programming, have questions, post them in the comment section. And um, uh, please, please try this out. It's gonna be a very, very fun project. Uh, all you need is a Docker, uh, Docker on your computer and that's it. Just do a Docker Compose up, the entire stack should be up and running. Thank you so much and I'll see you guys in the upcoming next video.